The Democrats' ambitious domestic agenda could be voted on as soon as next week, now that Democrats are reportedly close to an agreement with the two holdout senators. At a town hall last night, Joe Biden tried to explain some of Joe Manchin's opposition, for example, to a climate provision. Joe Manchin's argument is, look, we still have coal in my state. You're going to eliminate it eventually. We know it's going away. We know it's going to be gone. But don't rush it so fast that my people don't have anything to do. We're not rushing anything so fast with coal. Uh, it's an economic argument that'll hurt people in his state short term. West Virginia still have to live on planet Earth, so preserving coal for an extra day is not a good medium or long-term plan. But how about free community college? In West Virginia, where only 21% of the population is college educated. What about a robust permanent child tax credit? In West Virginia, 16% of the population lives in poverty, and nearly one-third of West Virginia children live in households that don't have enough food to eat or are beyond, behind on their rent. Joining us now is the Bishop, Dr. William J. Barber, the co-chair of the Poor People's Coalition, the president of Repairers of the Breach, uh, and we can add expert on all the ways that the Democratic agenda could help people economically. Uh, Reverend Dr. Barber, uh, good evening to you. You are really going out of your way to, to make the point to Joe Manchin in particular that there are things in this large bill that would be of direct help to many, many people in his state. You're right, Alan. His people have said, we want to have a revival rally on the Capitol steps because many of us voted for him. We're tired of these lies saying he's doing this for us. 40% of West Virginia is either poor or low well. Um, the people that want to speak out are those people. And so on Sunday at 4 o'clock, that's what's happening. Senator Manchin has basically become Senator No. He's no on full family uh, leave. He's no on the environment. He's no on seniors having better Medicare. He's no on students going to community college. He's no on voting rights. The only thing since he's yes to is yes to corporations and yes to the greedy. He's not a moderate. He's really politically mean and immoral. His plan will actually cost West Virginia 17, I mean, 10,000 jobs. Biden's plan would, would bring 17,000. And this man says he cares about working people, but Ali, he doesn't even want people to make $15 uh, an hour living wage, minimum living wage, like, like firefighters, like the people in his state. And so the people have said they want to speak out and tell the truth and, 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 and say he's not doing this for us. Even the coal miners have said they know they, they want the things in this plan because they understand where um, the country is headed and where, where the environment is headed. So, you know, every time you bring up $15 an hour, I like to remind people that's $30,000 a year. This is not uh, people running away with something. Uh, that, that, that itself is a hard amount of money to live on. But you, you, you make an important point that in all of this discussion, the people who don't have lobbyists and don't have representation in the offices of the, uh, of the lawmakers are the poor and low wealth people of this country. Um, and you have worked for the last several months to try and get their voices heard so that folks can understand how they actually live, how this, these changes will actually affect them and, and raise them up. Tell me a bit of what, what you've learned. Yeah. Well, I actually agree with one of your earlier bosses, but, but, uh, guests that said, we should have never, Democrats should have never, I'm an independent, but should have never gotten tied up in these number arguments. You've said that. It should have been about values. What is the cost if we don't do this? And to be quite honest, we begged, we pleaded, even with the handlers at the White House, let us bring some folk, low-income, poor folk from West Virginia, Arizona, Texas, to the over office privately, let them sit with the president, some economists and some moral leaders, and then let them go to the mic and talk about the impact of the plan on them. For some reason, I don't know what it is, it seems like even some of our Democratic friends are afraid of the very people that they're trying to help. So on the one hand, you have Manchin lying on the people, trying to claim that he's helping them. But then for some reason, other people don't want to put the people in front of the mic who are actually going to be impacted. That's what we're going to be trying to do Sunday at 4 o'clock uh, at the West Virginia State House, because we need to put a face yeah. on this, Alex. And not just numbers. But it is hard, whether it's this or it's voting rights, it's hard for working folk and low income folk and, 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 and people who live in poverty to, to take that time out. It's a privilege for the rest of us to be able to protest and get out there. You, you have warned that we must not discount these people. We think of them as voiceless, and so we talk around them and about them rather than to them. And you have warned that, in fact, they are a voting block, they are powerful. And if they are rejected, they will remember the fact that they were rejected. 
Exactly. And one of the things we better hurry up and understand, America, is that 40, uh, 30, a third of the electorate is now poor. And in all of the battleground states, 40 percent are either poor or low wealth. And we're working to mobilize them into a powerful block around an agenda, because that's actually the sleeping giant. We just released a study called Waking the Sleeping Giant, and it shows in all the battleground states the real power that can turn elections is poor and low wealth people. Uh, Reverend ba Dr. Barber, it is a, a pleasure to speak to you again. Thank you for joining us tonight. The Bishop, William J. Barber of the Poor People's Campaign. Always appreciate your time, sir.